Hi there, so today we're in a house we've just bought. Uh, I decided I'm gonna try and do as many of these videos as I can in a house. I think it's good to be able to have a little look around. What I wanna talk about today is why we do almost everything we possibly can not to flip a house. We wanna keep houses, not flip them on. And this house was one that was just on the edge and I wanna to talk to you about why I decided to keep it and not flip it. Um, well, I'll, I'll flip the camera now, and then you have a little look around and then I'm gonna use a bit of a whiteboard as well. So hold on, I shall flip the camera and uh, let's have a look around then. So kitchen, it's been a little bit stripped out. We got the keys last, last Friday, so a couple of days ago. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know if you can quite tell from the camera, we go to a lot of houses of course, but it's in a nicer area. It's a little bit bigger. It's not in bad condition, although it's been a, you know, an older person's house. They've gone into a nursing home and you can see that Room we're in there, that's the ground floor. It's got off street parking, a, a garage, decent sized garden. Like I say, it's a, it's a nicer area than uh, we, would, we would perhaps normally buy. And it was quite a bit more expensive, I think, the end value on this one. But we'll get to the numbers in a minute. But uh, the end, end value is going to be quite a lot more. Here we go, I'll just you know, spun around there. That's good, got that. So, big rooms, that's probably a medium sized room there. It's probably the smallest room, actually. And again, it's, it's a double in there. There's a family bathroom, which decorated to our taste of course but it's actually all we'll be doing in there is is plumbing it up in pretty much exactly the same way with new kit so quite an easy renovation cupboard there and the cupboard there so there's quite a few sort of storage areas that i think we'll be able to repurpose and move around and, uh, and get a bit more space and then the view down the stairs there and into this this is the the bigger bedroom i was kind of set myself up in here because i found myself a whiteboard so let's use the whiteboard so, I think this is going to work well. Oh. Whiteboard. Flip. Key. We can run through the numbers. So, purchase price. Now, before you think I'm some kind of maths genius here, adding all this up, I, I, I have thought about this as well. I wrote the numbers down this morning. Um, purchase price. Now, if we were to flip it or keep it, it's the same thing, isn't it? And on this house, we paid £110,000. For the property. So whether we're going to keep it or flip it, um, it, it, it's the same, isn't it? So in terms of the works, what we're going to spend on, on uh, renovating the property, if we flip it or keep it, I am going to do it ever so slight difference just uh, to recognise the fact that because I'm keeping this property, there are one or two things that I just don't need to do. Uh, I'm not going to spend quite as so much money in the garden. And yeah, there's just a few things that absolutely fine, I'm going to keep this house for the next 30 or 40 years. So you know, I don't need things to be um, you know, cosmetically perfect. Uh, to get that curb appeal to sell it. So the renovation, um, we're gonna spend 15 grand on this because I'm gonna keep it. And I think that if we were to sell it, I probably wanna spend a few more, let's call it 18,000 pounds. If you put, put oh, we've got a flip spec, because that's the thing, we do do flips. Uh, what I'm trying to point out here is, where that decision point is and why we fight so hard to try and keep the ones that we keep. I'd have to spend more money on the, on, on the garden for sure, a bit more in the kitchen, the bathroom will be slightly, slightly different, just, just to get it, you know, so once it goes on the market, it would sell. Now, um, that obviously make, makes a total. Um, one, two, five. One, two, eight. Okay, now we're going to talk about what the house will be worth when we've done that work. And if we're keeping it, that's the value we can place, place a, a remortgage on. And if we're selling it, it's the sale price. So on the flip side, sell price. checking it all fits in it still fits in it still fits in now uh, i know that we can sell this for 160,000 pounds and the value we're going to put instead of the sell we're going to put value 160,000 pounds now quick bit of maths there you can see that the profit on this
£32,000. And if you were to sell it, but we've got the slightly reduced cost for the works, actually your sale price will be 35 would wouldn't it? But we're not going to sell it. And actually, we don't think about selling, we think about refinancing it. And what I thought, we're going to refinance it, we're going to get a mortgage based on that. So mortgage at 75% loan to value based on that amount of money is £120,000. Now, this is where you've got the, the decision point because do you want £32,000 in your pocket or do you want what I'm about to describe? Um, I always think of this as the tortoise and the hare. You really want this, but it definitely takes a bit of thinking about to work out why, because people definitely get seduced by that £32,000 on your bank. Um, let's, let's just sort of dig into this a little bit more. Uh, your capital employed at this um, is £5,000. I'll, I'll work out and show you how, but let's put um, cap employed £5,000. Is that still in there? Just. I'm going to move that down a little bit in a second. Um, why? We spent £125,000 on the property and we've got a mortgage that's given us back £120,000 and the mortgage was 75% of £160,000. So we can see that if we've got 120 grand back but we put 125,000 in, we've employed 5,000 pounds of our own capital. So it's a stark contrast, isn't it, between 32,000 pounds in your bank and 5,000 pounds less in your bank. Right, I'm just gonna shift this down a second. That's giving me more work to room to work. I think I'm going to be sat on the floor by the end of this, but that's okay. So, what next? Equity, and it's really important to talk about equity. So on this, what is your equity? That is, how much of that pro property do you own, but the bank doesn't, you know, the equity in the property. And it's this. It's the difference between the valuation and the loan. So in that case, it's a clear cut, £40,000. Now, your £40,000 is of course, including £5,000 of the money that you started off with, okay? So I think that's all laying out pretty clear. Mortgage, um, at sort of 3%, you work it out, that would be 300 pounds per car in a month. So you'd have to, because you've borrowed 120 grand. So your mortgage is 300 per car a month, mortgage. Your rent in this one, I know we rent this for about 675 per car a month. Costs about 120 quid. And that means you're going to be making about £540 profit every single month. £540 profit. Need to zoom out again. Going to do it. definitely going to be sitting on the floor. So I've got most of my key numbers in there. They're a bit squiffy, but key one that we're going to bring it down to is your profit. So all these things add up to, so your, your mortgage at £300 a month, your rent's going to be six, seven, five. dollars um, you've got some costs per month. I put that in as 20% of your rent, 120 quid. So your £540 profit is 6000 I'll tie this one up at the end so that it's nice and neat. £6,480 per 
annum profit. And the reason I wanted to do that and sort of labour that point was you're five grand down. Some people can think that you're five grand down at that point. You've got five thousand pounds less in your bank than when you started. It only takes a year to get that back, doesn't it? So that's pretty good. Now we've got those numbers on the board. Um, first things first, this appears a lot more complicated, doesn't it? Um, but in actual fact, there's a couple of things in here that are significantly more complicated if you want to flip it. The first one is finding the deals. Uh, the second one is the time frame, how long it's going to take. I can do this. We can get this house here, the one we've sat in today, renovated and rented within the next two months. Tenant in there paying. I can do this refinance within six months and get all my money back out. This is a process I can control. I can just dial up a mortgage company and they come out and tell me it's worth 160 grand and they're gonna give me a mortgage of 120,000 pounds. They're just gonna do that. Um, if I'm wrong a, a little bit, I'm not wrong by much more than 5,000 pounds. Selling it for 160,000 pounds, how long is that gonna take? Is it gonna take a, a week or a year? I've done both and it's taken both. Am I definitely going to get 160 grand or am I going to have to drop it down a little bit just to get rid of it? I can see why people really want to earn that 32,000 pounds. As soon as you earn it, you've got to pay tax on it. As soon as you pay tax on it and it's in your bank, you've then got to go and do it again and do it again and again. And that's work. What we're trying to get to is a point where you don't have to work as much as you can. You can't have, as we say, you can't do five jobs, 10 jobs. This is a treadmill. You, you, you're going to try and get off it. You want to try and get off it. How are we going to try and get off it? Well, we're going to say, well, if we did make 32,000 pounds, where would we want to put it? What would we want to do with it to get off that treadmill? You put it here. In actual fact, you get to put it here without paying tax. And then you sell it and you just kept it. Um, Instead of having your £32,000 profit, you've got equity of £40,000. Okay, five grand of that was already your equity, but you replaced that pretty quickly, didn't you? It's all looking pretty good so far. You're going to chip in and say, well, there's fees. I haven't taken fees into account. You know, I can only fit, I've had to zoom out twice to get it on the wardrobe door. Um, no, fees aren't taken into account. But don't forget, if I were to put fees in here, there'd be twice as much there because you're buying and selling. Maybe enough five, twice as much, but two lots of stamp duty and costs, but the buyer pays. But the fees are more there than they are there. Most important thing for me is on this side, you're building something. Um, I love the fact that every single house that I buy forces me to save about £40,000. Um, 35 in this case, five grand of it was already my other savings, but I got that from another house anyway, and I'm replacing it back with rent. For me, this is the ultimate lifestyle business, and we fight really hard. You can see why this house with these figures is just on the cusp of, what well, do we keep it, do we sell it? And I fought really hard um, to make sure this is one that we keep. And, well, that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep it. I might do a few videos from the renovation as well. That's it for today.